I told you months ago that no matter how popular these border closures looked for the state premiers, there would eventually be a reckoning that people would wake up to how they do more harm than good. And there are clear signs that this is happening as people voice their opposition to border closures and to the draconian and unnecessary lockdown and curfew that's been imposed on Melbourne. The Victorian opposition is even backing a court challenge now against the curfew, arguing it has no legal basis. There's also growing concern about more than 20,000 Australians stranded overseas. We showed you last night how Labor leader Anthony Albanese reckons the federal government ought to use its planes to fly people back. But that's not the problem. The problem is the limits imposed by the states because they're running the overseas quarantine regimes. New South Wales is dealing with the overwhelming majority of arrivals. Queensland and South Australia are handling a few. And, of course, Victoria, because it's stuffed up quarantine, won't allow any international flights in at all. That Victorian quarantine bungle really is the gift that keeps giving. The federal government is now asking the states to lift their quotas and let more people return. And it looks like they'll cooperate. Maybe Victoria could get its act together, but don't get your hopes up because we heard in the quarantine inquiry today that the chief health officer was sidelined from overseeing the quarantine operations and he didn't even know that private security guards were being used until after the outbreaks had occurred. Still up in Queensland, Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk is suddenly sounding all conciliatory and compassionate saying her state will look at taking more people from overseas. I think it's imperative that we get back to Australia as many Australians as we possibly can. I would be more than happy to look at taking more Australians here where we have the capacity to do so because I don't want families to be separated. Wow. Could this be the same Premier that people have been calling heartless? Could this be the same Premier who said Queensland hospitals were for Queenslanders and people from New South Wales should stick to their own hospitals? Could it be the same Premier who earlier this week was saying this? Now, if it means I have to lose the election, I will risk all that if it means keeping Queenslanders safe. Well, what could have changed her mind? Why would the Premier suddenly sound more reasonable? I wonder if it could be anything to do with this, the market research or opinion polling that the Queensland Labor government has undertaken at taxpayers' expense, more than half a million dollars worth of it, half a million dollars worth of taxpayer-funded opinion polls. What a shocking misuse of taxpayers' money. But what does it tell us about the Premier's rationale? She keeps saying she acts only on medical advice, but now it looks like she also acts on the advice of taxpayer-funded pollsters. When people were in lockdown, we asked people how they were feeling. And because some people were going through a really tough time, we put more money into domestic and family violence services. And we also put more money into mental health. We also asked people, for example, about um, how they would feel about signing into restaurants. I mean, something they have never had to do before. But this sentiment is done across Australia. It's done by every state. And it's done by the federal government as well. Seriously? You need a poll to see how people are doing in lockdown or without jobs? Let me give you the big tip, Premier. I reckon they'll tell you it sucks. And signing into restaurants? Well, you could ask us here in New South Wales, Premier. No one surveyed us. We just scan our phones or jot down our number at the restaurant or the pub. And let me tell you, it feels great to eat out and catch up with friends. It's not a problem to leave your details. There are there you are, right there. I could have told you all that for free. Anybody could tell you all that for free. The solution you are looking for, actually, is to allow maximum freedom, maximum normality, not kill the joint because you've convinced yourself any infections at all constitute a political failure. Still, given Palaszczuk has suddenly started talking a little more sense on overseas arrivals... And she even suggested she might lower the threshold for reopen, reopening the New South Wales border. Given she's now talking a little more sense, then maybe Daniel Andrews should do some polling too.